in, um, in, in DECO, we're working very hard uh, at this, and uh, we have outlined the sub-themes that we are looking at. We're looking at sub-themes that will deal with labor, sub-themes that will deal with social, uh, um, with the civil society. We're looking at sub-themes that will deal with tourism. We want to bring uh, our tourism uh, industry on, on, on board to uh, ensure that uh, we are able to support it. Um, we will be going to, um, to the G20 um, very soon. Uh, we co-chair the working group uh, of uh, G20 and we hope there to consolidate some of the matters that we are uh, very concerned about. As you know, we are uh, putting up a bid uh, and lobbying to be in uh, the United Nations Security Council uh, and uh, we have been hard at work at this. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Minister Asis Pahad for assisting us in this regard. Um, we were invited to come to uh, New York at a time when we were busy chairing the Troika meeting in Angola and we would not have been able to make it and he packed his bags very quickly and we could not have found a more fleet-footed representative to go there uh, and represent us. Uh, he is uh, a library of uh, our international relations and he was the best person to send there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the rest will be given to you to go through uh, at your own time. We now come to the issue that uh, is um, all over the newspapers. Finally, <clears throat> and I'd like to read to you the statement that uh, we issued. We've had uh, continuous uh, interaction with the president as he was preparing to leave and um, <clears throat> We had to think very carefully about the steps that we, take, we were taking. Um, the, the violence in, uh, in Gaza seems to have started around midday yesterday. Uh, we picked it up because we have a very alert, alert sy uh, system. Um, and by 3.30 it had been picked up by, uh, by Al Jazeera because of the sheer scale of the deaths that uh, were coming out of that area. Uh, by uh, 5 p.m., the, the president and I were working out what uh, to do about this matter. And the first thing we did was to issue a statement, and I read the statement. Uh, so that the South African government condemns in the strongest terms possible the latest act of violence, violent aggression carried out by, by is the Israeli armed forces along the Gaza border, which has led to the deaths of 40 civilians. And we are told today that the death toll has risen. The victims were taking part in a peaceful protest against provocative, the provocative inauguration of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. The latest attack has resulted in scores of other Palestinian citizens reported injured, and the, the, the number of injured by 10 o'clock yesterday was at 2.7 thousand people injured. Uh, given the indiscriminate and grave, and grave manner of the latest attack, uh, on, on the Israeli, on the uh, Palestinian people, the South African government has taken a decision to recall Ambassador Sisan Gumbane with immediate effect until further notice. As we have stated on previous occasions, the South African government reiterates its views that the Israeli Defense Force must withdraw from the Gaza Strip and bring to an end the violent and destructive incursions into Palestinian territories. South Africa maintains further that the violence in the Gaza Strip will stand in the way of rebuilding a peaceful solution to the problem in the Middle East. We in South Africa remain extremely concerned about this matter. We in South Africa have been part of trying to create a peaceful resolution to the problem from the beginning of our term in government. Uh, and we remain extremely concerned. Um, before the president left uh, in the evening, I had the opportunity to call my counterpart in the United States. Uh, I had a very friendly discussion with him. He is new in, in his portfolio. Um, and we went over some of the problems that uh, are being experienced in the Middle East. Uh, and uh, finally, my request to him on behalf of the South African government was, is there no way that we could put off for a while 
the establishment and inauguration of the embassy in East Jerusalem. And he said, sadly, Minister, it's too late for that. Uh, this, uh, the horse has bolted. We just have to deal with the outcome of what has happened. Uh, we are informed that um, the people in um, Palestine are going for more uh, uh, for more marches today, and we hope that uh, we can persuade the Israeli uh, Defense Force to to be a little more cautious. It is possible for them to protect themselves if they wish to protect themselves with any other means but deadly means which they used yesterday. It is unacceptable and we join the rest of the world in condemning this. Ladies and gentlemen, I will end there. Thank you very much. Thanks, Minister. We will uh, take questions three. H.A.K.O. Yan Yan. Anna. Thank you very much. You can go. <coughs> Thank you, Minister. Um, questions will focus on the budget. Um, Firstly, uh, by how much is the budget being grown? Every year we see a growth in the DERCO budget um, later on in the year because of normally the embassy spending more than was anticipated for any number of reasons. Do you see a growth of um, the budget allocation come October? Secondly, um, on the matter of Iran and the US, what <coughs> the South African view be on the fact that that agreement was never ratified by the U.S. Senate and therefore didn't bind the U.S. anyway. Um, thirdly, um, the South African government is forever being thrown with that speech which Madiba made that our, our foreign policy will be guided by human rights principles. If so, why are we so close to Iran given its human rights record? And finally, on your quote just now, with your discussion with your U.S. counterpart, which I take to be the U.S. Secretary of State. Yes. Did he use the words, as you quoted now, because this is important, that sadly, mm -hmm. it cannot, the words sadly, mm -hmm. that it cannot uh, be changed now that the horse has bolted. Okay. Uh, morning, Minister. It's uh, from Independent Media. Um, Minister, I wanted to find out, given the escalation of the violence in the Middle East now, and taking into consideration that there is an NC conference resolution yes. on the gun crazy in Tel Aviv, how much will that impact on the decision? And will that mean? or fast-track the decision of the ANC to down trade the embassy in Israel. Thanks. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Good morning, Jan Gerber, News 24. Um, first of all, is there any plans um, regarding Israel's embassy in South Africa? Um, secondly, the, the United States, they recently said that they will consider reviewing the uh, foreign aid to countries who doesn't vote with them in the UN. And um, we've been, South Africa is one of the, the countries who think not to vote with them. <coughs> Will that influence South Africa's foreign policy in any way? Um, also with the U.S. and um, also referring to the work of the Special Commission, <coughs> does it complicate matters when a group like Office of Quorum, who denies that the fact that it was a crime against humanity, goes to the U.S. and speaks to a lot of um, senators and basically complaining about South African policy and giving a warped view of the PNC. That's the complicated department for the EU. And I think that you will be thanks. Okay. Maybe just in production, we forgot to name the media house. Uh, from News 24. Okay, oh, thanks. Minister? Um, I'll ask the TG to respond to uh, Yan Yan Yobe about uh, the budget um, of DECO and whether we are likely to uh, uh, request more because of uh, requests from our missions. It would, see, it would seem to me that, uh, you know, we, we deal with such an uncertain world that we respond to issues as they arise. Therefore, we are likely from time to time to require more than we have budgeted for. 
uh, and we live in a, a very turbulent time. And I would expect that um, even um, even Treasury understands that they would need from time to time to be um, uh, resources put aside to assist us in doing our work. But uh, I will give the DG the opportunity now to deal with the specifics of how much we have received, how much has it grown from the last uh, uh, budget allocation. DG. Thank you, Honourable Minister and um, colleagues. The Actually, the budget of the department has just increased a little bit from 6.4 billion rand the previous financial year to only 6.5 this year. This does not take into consideration the currency fluctuation that <coughs> mostly affect the operations of depart our department since we operate in in, 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 in other jurisdictions, financial jurisdictions. Indeed, this is a, even if you look at the, uh, the inflation uh, uh, measure, it is not really what you can call an increase, but just a, a, a mere uh, uh, increase for the purpose of moving up from what you have before. But uh, the, the situation is just the same in, in Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, let, let me answer the, the matter of, uh, let me respond to the matter of uh, my counterpart. Um, I don't know why uh, Yan Yan would ledge onto the word sadly, so let me describe the context. What, what should the Americans do if we report it? You'll see. Sadly. Is it no, no, it isn't, because it depends on how you interpret it. Um, we've been uh, wanting to have a, a discussion with the Secretary of State for over a period of a week, and we have been missing each other. We finally found each other yesterday. Um, I asked to, I asked that he be taken out of whatever meeting he was, because I needed to talk to him to say that we are issuing the statement. We are unhappy with the. Uh, response of the United States and we are unhappy with the un unraveling situation in, in the Gaza. Uh, and uh, he responded and he came online and he, we had a discussion. Um, we, we um, fellow former intelligence officers, both of us, we have a common history and we understand the nature of the situation that we're in. The request I was making on behalf of my country, is to say, is there a possibility that the United States could consider? And what he was saying to me is no. But to, me, to my request, sadly, he was unable to. Sadly, he was unable to, to accede to my request because there's a decision that had already been fixed and um, done and dusted. Uh, the decision had been taken by the United States government and uh, what we are seeing now uh, possibly the repercussions of a, of a decision that already is fixed, so he could not in any way consider my request. Um, I will ask um, what happens, uh, sorry, I, I will respond to the AFRI Forum uh, uh, issue and uh, ask um, uh, Deputy Minister Landers to respond to the Iran uh, uh, matters. You know, um, Afri Forum has uh, the, all the right to go and lobby for whatever cause they would like to lobby for. We believe in freedom of speech, and therefore they're free to go to the United States, they're free to go anywhere and lobby. Um, what we find uh, very offensive is when they exaggerate the situation. We've seen some uh, footage of some of the... Of the uh, pictures and uh, videos that video clips that they have sent out we've seen some of them sent out especially in Australia um, and they're extremely exaggerated we have over and over indicated over a long period of time that the issue of land is something that is in our constitution it has taken us a long time to get to where we are because we have been very cautious we had started on a slow approach 
of willing buyer, willing seller, it has not worked. Our people are becoming very agitated. We are running out of our own time, having passed the Constitution so long ago. And therefore, we have come to this decision, which was confirmed and a resolution passed by the 54th Con Congress of the a Conference of the ANC. And we have decided that we're going to put the matter of, of, of uh, the issue of the land in the hands of Parliament. It will be debated very sensibly, very sensitively, with everybody given the opportunity to attend and express themselves. The horror stories that are being put out there about what is going on in South Africa are blatantly false. Mm. And uh, the people who are propagating them have no interest in any solution on the issue of land. We condemn what they're doing out there and we ask them to stop. But there is no way we can stop them from meeting anybody they would like to meet. But we are appealing to them as South Africans not to spread exaggerated views about what is happening in our country. We have bound ourselves to dealing with this matter through the parliamentary processes, and if anybody has any view, those processes will be opened up to anybody to express themselves. Thank you. I'll now ask the Deputy Minister Landers to deal with the issue of Iran. Uh, Yan Yan, uh, ladies and gentlemen, South Africa and Iran share a long historical relationship. Um, we view Iran as a strategic partner within the Middle East and Central Asian regions. And so um, this relationship we have with Iran gives us an opportunity to sensitize Iran when its actions negatively impact on the rest of the world. <coughs> And uh, we've done this uh, on many occasions. Now, it is also important to note, uh, and we take the point you make, Yan Yan, that the US Senate did not uh, ratify the agreement. <coughs> and yet the agreement is recognized throughout the world. And as such, there are five European states who remain within the agreement, have made it clear to the head of state of the U.S. and look at the ten remaining in the agreement. So, to come back to your question, why are we so close to Iran? That is why. In the same way that we are close to Iran, we are equally close to Iran's <coughs> mortal enemy, Saudi Arabia. Please bear that in mind. I think you need to understand the crucial role that South Africa plays in this regard. Because in as much as Iran is now seen as some great devil, Saudi Arabia too plays a crucial role in this regard. And the events in Syria, Yemen, and other parts of the Middle East bear this out. Thank you. Thank you. Um <coughs> A few, few days ago, we had a uh, visit from the Foreign Minister responsible for Africa from Saudi Arabia, and it became quite clear to us that the role that we play in relating equally to both of them is a very important one, because we are able to, be, to intercede on both, we are able to be um, the bridge between them when they have a problem, and um, I think um, I appreciate that we are in that space. Thank you. Thank you. Can we take another card? Oh, one more. Yes, Minister. Mkwanazi's question hasn't been answered. Mm -hmm. uh, downgrade of the embassy in Tel Aviv. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. Ah, sorry, that's an, an important one. Uh, yes, um, the ANC's decision was actually very strong and very specific. I'm looking for it, Mkwanazi. Um, they actually ordered us to, to downgrade the, the embassy. Uh, and uh, we were still uh, mulling over exactly what to do uh, on this matter uh, when this uh, unfolded. Uh, the ANC's decision on this, uh, on this matter is... Um, Uh, 
Okay. Uh, on Palestine. And I quote, consequently, and in order to give our practical expression of support to the oppressed people of Palestine, the ANC has unanimously resolved to direct the South African government to immediately and unconditionally downgrade the South African embassy in Israel to a liaison office, close quote. So there was, uh, they were not, they were uh, not uh, mincing their words on this, they were directing us to do that. And we had not quite worked out um, the modalities of doing that until this happened. We are working on it, and uh, when we, we've come to some kind of finality, we will be able to report that we have done that. Uh, but uh, we have been given instructions, and uh, uh, we instructions from the ANC are just that, instructions. In front. Uh, thanks, uh, Abu from the Minister, without free and uh, perhaps if you can show us what are some of your priorities for this kind of financial year. Secondly, with regard to the relocation, the decision taken by the U.S. to relocate its members to Israel. In some quarters, there are people who are saying that the U.S. has not been broken in good faith in these discussions. Is this the, se the same sentiment that you are showing? You're talking about the ir ir withdrawing from the Iranian no. uh, pact? No. no, moving the embassy to Jerusalem. Yes. Oh, okay, no, then I'll ask uh, Deputy Minister Lenders to indicate whether we think this has been done in good faith or not. <coughs> Deputy Minister. Okay. I'll just take the second question, Minister. Oh, okay. Thank you, Minister Lester, come and say, Minister, where in the project, where is Durko in the project of trying to locate and bring back uh, members of the Gupta family who are wanted, not only by police, but also by parliament itself to come answer questions at various committees. Um, <laughs> one last question. <laughs> this might be. There's another budget for another briefing at 10. Uh, anyone in Pretoria can see the colleagues? Pretoria, good afternoon. Yeah, in Pretoria. Good morning, Chairperson. Uh, thank you. We don't have questions from this side. Yeah, that's why I was saying it's in the afternoon. <laughs> 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 uh, the Deputy Minister on Jerusalem. Um, I, I want to repeat to, to this House what I said to a meeting of ambassadors in Pretoria when it was announced that the United States would move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. These were my words. Effectively, the United States has removed itself as the honest broker in the conflict between Israel and Palestine, which had, it had played up until that moment. So <clears throat> it was rather unfortunate, uh, this decision, and uh, well, we're seeing the results of that decision in the events that occurred in Gaza yesterday and today and in the coming days um, and of course to add insult to injury they chose to move the embassy on what is regarded by Palestinians as almost a holy day um, and that was incredibly insensitive of the US administration so it's regrettable um, we note that uh, <coughs> the UN has uh, spoken out against it. Um, the question of Eastern Jerusalem as Palestine's capital has not been resolved. And so all these matters will add to or exacerbate uh, the problems faced in that part of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. What are the priorities? priorities? Yes. Um, we'll share this with the deputy ministers because we also have shared responsibilities. Uh, we've broken down the world into parts that are manageable for the three of us. 
From uh, me at the center, we um, went to Kigali and had a very successful uh, uh, AU conference and uh, we had been discussing um, Africa free trade uh, zone um, and we had a very um, lively debate in Kigali. South Africa was able to sign the Kigali Declaration. However, because of the nature of our economy and the nature of our own constitution, we are required to pass some of our um, what, uh, treaties, t protocols to be ratified by parliament. That uh, protocol is now in parliament and if parliament passes it, we are hoping that uh, uh, we will be able to sign uh, that protocol very soon and be part of those uh, countries on the African continent that have ratified the protocol. And uh, we, we think that we've laid the basis of making sure that we can create a free trade area in Africa. We will now be uh, concentrating on infrastructure that facilitates this. It was a very fruitful time that we had and we want to make sure that uh, we complete it on a very high note. Our people actually were very much uh, our own uh, uh, officers, public servants were very much at the forefront of this, and we're very fr proud of the of the outcome of the Kigali conference. <coughs> Secondly, we are hoping that uh, we can prepare for uh, the BRICS uh, summit that will be coming in July. Thirdly, we are hoping that we can assist the president in making sure that the investment. Uh, uh, summit that he is planning for uh, in October is a success. Uh, our unemployment rate is completely unacceptable and uh, it is important that all of us concentrate on, on solving this problem, especially if we want to make sure that we ourselves are able to solve other people's problems, we've got to be able to have a stable environment uh, domestically. Uh, <clears throat> Thirdly, um, our priority is to make sure that we do uh, get the necessary uh, votes to be part of the United Nations Security Council to, and, and, to, and get the seat there. We've been working feverishly on that. Uh, the decision will be made on the 8th of uh, June, which is very soon. So soon after the budget vote, we will be concentrating uh, on that matter. Um, thereafter, we will be... Um, uh, co-chairing the G20 working group and we hope to put some of our issues there for consideration and uh, to lobby uh, the G20 countries for that particular seat. Uh, we um, are signatories to some of the uh, protocols that uh, we uh, discussed in uh, at Chogam at the Commonwealth and uh, part of those are good governance. And this brings me back to my own department. It's important uh, for us to look at how the department functions. Uh, is there good governance in every sphere of what we do? Are we properly accountable for what we do? Uh, we have asked um, the ambassadors and um, uh, high commissioners and representatives of our missions abroad to come for a meeting so that we can discuss whether or not we are servicing them efficiently because only an efficient and uh, effective administration would be able to have the kind of uh, impact that we would like to have in the world. We would like to make sure that South Africa returns to the space that it used to occupy. Um, uh, Madiba once uh, said about uh, Oliver Tambo <coughs> that this man was a colossus who did bestride the world uh, and we inherited that kind of stature. Mm. It continued into Madiba's time. We would like to regain that stature mm. because at the bottom of our foreign policy is peace, justice, human rights and all of those good things that uh, we have crafted over our own struggle. We've been through struggle. We've been through occupation of a particular nature. And wherever we can, we would like to assist other countries get out of a situation such as we were in. We're very passionate about our position 
in making sure that we can create peace. We're passionate about our position in making sure that the rest of Africa can return to normality. And we give a great deal of our time in creating some kind of acceptant, acceptable arrangements for countries that find themselves in trouble. Uh, we can count the countries that we have uh, uh, been to to try and create peace, and uh, the peace endeavor is still part of our foot forward. Uh, we will be looking at uh, our own administration because the Auditor General has uh, reached out to me to indicate that he is unhappy about a number of things and uh, uh, I will be talking to the top management and uh, making sure that I would like these matters investigated thoroughly. The Auditor General has threatened that uh, if in uh, three weeks time we have not sorted out our administrative financial problems, we will get a qualified audit. Now, in all the years that I've been in government, I have not ever had a qualified audit, and I will not have it now. So we will make sure that we do the necessary introspection, we will make sure that we have the necessary investigations and are able to respond to the Auditor General. I could go on and on about what our priorities are, and our priorities are not limited to what we want to do. Sometimes they are thrown at us, such as in this particular case with the matter of uh, Gaza, because of the circumstances that we find ourselves. Uh, Deputy Minister Mahawale uh, will also indicate that in her sphere of responsibility, what her priorities are. Thank you, Minister, and greetings to colleagues. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, before we I give over to you, there was a question about the Guptas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question about the Guptas, we, we leave that. Uh, Menzi, is Menzi in, is my legal advisor in the room? Yeah, he's there. He's there. <laughs> Are we ch still chasing the Guptas? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we, we have discovered that we do not have a, an extradition treaty with, uh, uh, with the UAE and we will be following this up because we would like to sign an extradition treaty with the UAE, if that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Minister, again, and greetings to the colleagues here. The uh, Minister has covered almost everything, uh, but generally would say the priority of, of, of the department and also my area of sphere, which is uh, uh, Africa. Asia, <laughs> Asia, Middle East, and some parts of Africa, of course. Our responsibility is public diplomacy, and uh, that's our priority. We cannot... Uh, we cannot compromise that. Even if our budget, we are focusing on, on cost curtailment, but that cannot be undermined. Mediation, also the dispute settlement and the conflict resolutions, uh, peace building through the inclusion of dialogue and, uh, uh, and negotiations. That's why we, we support the decision by Minister and President, because it was so urgent, uh, it looked like they were reacting, but uh, it was so urgent that decision was to be taken to recall our ambassador from Israel. And uh, we are not saying because this has happened, we are still going to follow all the protocols of government to make sure that we even implement the decision of the, of the ANC of uh, downgrading our embassy in, in, in Israel. So we are committed to the Africa at peace by 2063. And it's a process that we are following until then. Those that are going to come after us must find uh, this to be at a higher level. We are prioritizing the Africa's goal of silencing the guns by 2020. That's what we are focusing at because we are for peace. South Africa is for peace. And that's why we are members to the United Nations and we support the peace. That's why we also want a seat in the United Nations Security Council. And we also promote the African agenda 
uh, with its priority in the area of peace uh, security as the minister has alluded but uh, we are going to embark on public uh, on, on diplomacy connecting our country to the entire world and uh, trying to mediate and do everything that will bring the world to peace thank you minister thank you very much deputy minister lenders <coughs> <laughs> um, the question was, what are our priorities for this year? And I'd indicated that uh, I have two very effective deputy ministers <coughs> who have areas of responsibilities before you dozed off. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, these deputy ministers would be given the opportunity to explain within their sphere of responsibility what their priorities are. Thank you, Ms. My mind is still on Gupta's. <laughs> my, my, my area of responsibility, and I've had this since I was uh, put into this position, was, is for the Americas. The Americas is South America, the Caribbean, the USA, Canada, Europe. Well, Europe is Europe. Parts of Africa and multilateral. Multinationals, the UN, General Assembly, UN Security Council in New York City, Human Rights Council in Geneva, and so on. Um, and then, of course, people like Mr. Makaya often pop in and impose further uh, uh, responsibilities <coughs> on my long suffering shoulders, Minister, um, which I do my level best to carry out. So that in brief is what I am charged with. Um, but of course, in this position you learn every day. We have excellent diplomats within Durko and uh, we lean on them uh, quite often. And they teach us this noble profession of diplomacy, what it entails. As a politician, sometimes, Minister, it's extremely difficult and I'm sure you will discover this if not already, that uh, as politicians we see things in a particular light, whereas the diplomats see it completely differently. And so uh, I thought people in the media should try and understand uh, that particular difficulty and challenge uh, that we face. I am not a diplomat. I've said this to my diplomats in Delco, and I'm saying this to you now. I am not a diplomat. I'm a politician, and quite often I will see things and I will say things as I see them as a politician. And um, if that means a, uh, what they refer to as diplomats, an incident, so be it. <laughs> well, I haven't experienced it. All I get is yes, Minister. <laughs> Um, we will be leaving the documentation behind because uh, we are mindful of the fact that we, are, we, we have limited time and we have another uh, uh, department coming in and we've also got to get our heads together around what is happening uh, in, in, in the Gaza and see how best we can offer our support uh, in solving the problem. Uh, it is a, a, a disaster that should not happen in our time. Mm completely unacceptable and we would like to um, reach out to the Jewish community in South Africa to make them understand that only in working together can we both of us solve the problem of, of, uh, of the Palestinian people. We have worked together with uh, the Jewish uh, community and they've been very uh, supportive uh, most times of what we have done uh, and we would now want to see sit down with them and explain to them that 55 people dead 2,700 people wounded is unacceptable mm -hmm. and we would like them to join us in condemning this mm -hmm. we would like them to join us in finding a lasting solution <coughs> for the people of, of Palestine I have been involved uh, in this as a minister of intelligence for the longest time we invited at some point uh, the representatives of the Defence Force 
of, of Israel and we invited Hamas to come to South Africa to talk with the Defense Force uh, generals of the apartheid state and the Defense Force generals of the current state. It was a very interesting engagement. Uh, we had two of such engagements and they are called Spear 1 and Spear 2. Um, and if we had gone along those lines, we might have reached a common goal. But of course what normally happens is that politicians change uh, and a new administration came in in, uh, in Israel uh, and uh, we were not able to continue. We would like to take off from where we left. Wherever it is possible for us to bring peace, we avail our own experience to bring peace. Thank you. Um, Vice Minister, we don't want one-on-one -on -one interviews. We had a lot of requests yesterday. We have set up outside. Uh, there's another briefing starting at 10 o'clock. So all of us who are here for DICO are asked to move quietly, but very fast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.